Yeah. Did you go to Asia that young? Yeah. See, I always thought you went to Asia when you were like your mid 20s or well, something. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Of all the people who make movies, be it action films, of all the actors who are considered in their field of action stars, the one I hate most is Steven Seagal. Before I get into ripping his facade apart, let me just say that he is not the worst person on earth. Oh. Um, so. I prefer, I think Sensei Steven Seagal with the three S's, it just sort of rolls off the tongue, you know? There you go. Hey, well, you're the commentator, see? When you look at these celebrities, people we celebrate, he's one of the worst, and personally, the one I resent the most. Me, myself, being a massive movie geek or nerd. Everyone sounds worse. First, Steven Seagal is a compulsive liar. Um, I don't even know if he's still alive. Is he still alive? Actually, we just had him on the show, like, three weeks ago. Yeah. I, I you know, I, I never knew this about him. Either he is a pathological liar, or he had somebody, you know, making up these stories. Over the years, Stephen has claimed that he helped train CIA operatives and did special favors for them. His ex-wife says, not at all, he was never in the CIA. He is of Italian descent, and he's actually half Jewish, half Irish. Fought the Yakuza, with assistance from the American mob is called in to help authenticate antique swords by auction houses as he is one of the world's most foremost experts on swords. Again, <laughs> was a student of the founder of Akido, Mori Shiba. You know, they had a scholarship program where if you flipped fast no, enough for stop. long... stop! <laughs> <clears throat> Whatever you say. Who died in 1968, meaning Stephen would have been a teenager living alone in Japan for that to have happened. Speaks four languages fluently. I'm unable to find any evidence of him speaking anything other than English. Made entirely of lies. He pooped himself. Steven I heard an unverified story <laughs> about uh, when Gene LaBelle and Steven Seagal had a Yeah, that's a true story. Yeah. That's an absolute true and story. Gene, Gene LaBelle told me that story. Yeah. Gene, Gene tells you it like this. He doesn't actually tell you the whole story. That's a story. Well, you know, Steven was trying to say that no one could choke him out. You can't choke him out. He had this move. <laughs> This move will stop you from choking out. So, you know, I said, all right, Steven, <laughs> let's try it. And I get him in a headlock there. I get him in the rear naked. And uh, he takes this hand, the free hand, and then you just karate chops me right in, you know, the old sisters. <laughs> and this is like, you know, the way Gino Bell talks. Right. He wouldn't even say his he balls. He's like the, the <laughs> nicest guy ever. He would say something like, right in the old Johnson. You know? And then, uh, well, and then I guess he got tired after doing that and he just fell asleep. <laughs> and I guess uh, maybe he forgot to go to the bathroom. <laughs> So he went to the bathroom then. Hello, that's hilarious. <laughs> Holy that's and if you know Gene LaBelle, Gene LaBelle is like, uh, first of all, he was like one of the original mixed martial artists. He's a, a judo guy that had cage fights, or it wasn't a cage, it was a, you know, um, a, a basically a mixed rules fight where a, he fought a boxer. You know, he mm -hmm. fought a boxer with his judo gi on and just took the boxer down and beat his ass. Mm -hmm. You know, Gene was like, he's like the guy that taught Bruce Lee about grappling. In the 2002 profile on Vanity Fair, Martial artist Gene LaBelle claimed he choked out Stephen during an Aikido exposition causing Seagal to poop his pants. Stephen denies it ever happened, but has also said he is Yakuza fighting CIA assassins, so, you know. Um, he came over to my trailer, and I was with a guy called Conrad Palmazano, who is still a legend, and one of the greatest stunt coordinators in the history of Hollywood. Uh, and we were standing there, we were just talking about moves and stuff like that. And we were just doing some stretching, and uh, you know he was showing me, you know, how you can stretch, or he, he wanted to stretch my back, and he stretched my back, and then I, and so if he said that he is a pathological scumbag liar. So what? Where, where does this and come from? It. Sorry, go ahead. Well, just to be fair to him, this is what he said when I asked him, just so to 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 set the record straight. He never really, actually, really wanted to clear the air for whatever reason but he did say well if a guy soils himself you can't criticize him because if they just had a nice big dinner an hour before you might have a tendency to do that that's what he was implying obviously the story we've heard is 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 sort of related to that so you're saying that someone has created this sort of fable this myth of an altercation that never even happened i did start to think of some of the things that he had said like he said to me that he beat the shit out of bruce lee 
And, you know, so I just started to think, well, you know what, maybe this is guy really is a pathological liar. Yeah. You yeah. know. Maybe this is the fight that we should and, and, we should book in the UFC. And I mean, well, he's got to be, what, 78 years old? Oh, now? yeah, if not older. Maybe he's 80. Yeah. You know, so. It's unfortunate. I mean, you know, it makes him look like a, a demented child. Are you familiar with his student, Ronda Rousey? Are you impressed by her? I've never heard of That's a her. I've never heard of her. Oh, okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, I don't mean to rile you up or everything. I thought this was a very fun interview. I just, uh, I just really wanted to get to the bottom of the story, and I think we finally put the nail in that coffin, don't you think? Yeah, you know, what you should do if you, if you don't believe me, and I'm pretty positive you do. I do, I do. Find Conrad Pomozano. I know you do. And find Conrad Pomozano, and let him call Conrad a liar, too. Sure. I mean, this guy, I mean, if he said those things, he should go have therapy. And by the way, one last thing. You mentioned Bruce Lee. Have you ever met Bruce? Obviously, when he was alive. Yes. Yes. How do you think he would have done in the UFC? In the I really don't know. I mean, you know, I met uh, Bruce through James Coburn. And I met uh, Bruce at his house many times. And, uh, you know, I knew Brandon, too. I first met Brandon when he was a baby boy, you know, probably six or seven years old, something like that. Young boy. Well, Sensei, on our third anniversary, this is our third anniversary show, a major honor for us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. There he is, the man himself, Sensei Steven Seagal. All you people, Nab fan, Judo Jean, Joe Rogan, all you people talking smack. should be ashamed. Rick? <laughs> We've got some questions or what? Yes, we do. All right. <laughs> he runs like a bitch. <laughs> Look at it online. You can see he runs like this. I'm not kidding. <laughs> like, he's, like he's a double dutching little bitch, but. <laughs> but he hits like a. Like he is like an Aikido master. He is yeah. six foot five. He, I'm he, scared of leaving the studio now. <laughs> He winded an actor in a chest for laughing at his lame attempt at intimidating him. Uh, uh, executive decision. Yeah. And, yeah. oh yeah, all three of you saw it. You take shots at Seagal, and he's still, he's a big guy. Oh, right? he said he's gonna hit, he said he's gonna punch me. He did. I heard. He told my, yeah. <laughs> right. He told his publicist, and his publicist told my publicist that he wants to punch me out. But, is, but he can't, because he's gonna be in jail soon, so I'll be fine. He is. Isn't he? I don't know. Well, that's he? what I heard. I better stop talking about yeah, it. Well, I, I thought he was going, desist letters. I, I thought he was being put away for Your a little while. Your publicist is freaking out now. Joanne Sutter is freaking out over. Is that? <laughs> no, I don't. Know. She's fogging she's, up the glass. She's, Back away from the glass. So, uh, but, uh, is there any, is there anyone you won't talk about because you worry about repercussions? Okay, I'm playing his master sergeant, and we come in for rehearsals, and he comes in. I'm in command. What I say is law. Anybody doesn't agree, and I was like. Poof! <laughs> I started cracking up because he sounded like a retard. And he came up and he he taekwondoed my ass against the brick. Wall. He went, Poosh! he's six foot five and caught me off guard, knocked all the air at me. I was like, oh, right. why? Why? What I really wanted to say is how big and fat he is, how he runs like a girl because he okay. does. <laughs> but I didn't. Because I could say it was why. Right, right, right. There is no reason for Steven Seagal to pretend like he is a serious man when he has enough ego to try and chop Jean LaBelle in the balls. It's not surprising he, if you look at his weird hair, that he'd even pretend that he's not balding when this photo of him early in his career is obviously the latter. He takes himself very, very seriously. From a profile on Steven in Vanity Fair, but he uh, was meeting Steven Seagal for the rewrite, for, for the writing, potentially, for Under Siege 2. Right. The, you know, and that was the one that broke him when it made right. $57 million, when that was $57 million. Right. In minutes, he's making him wait, sitting there by himself. Finally, Steven Seagal emerges from one of the other anterior rooms in the mobile home, and he comes out and he said, I just read the greatest script I've ever read in my life. He goes, really? Who wrote it? I did. <laughs> also, here are some of the things Steven Seagal, star of Under Siege, and whatever that film is called where he and Ja Rule steal gold or something, has said about acting. The secret is not to act, but to be. <laughs> I'm hoping that I could be known as a great writer and actor someday, rather than a sex symbol. 
he may or may not have several sex slaves. At various points, Stephen has allegedly sexually harassed Jenny McCarthy, uh, Ray Charles' granddaughter, and four office assistants on the set of Out for Justice. A 23-year-old former model who was hired as Stephen's executive assistant claims that when she showed up to work for her first day, she learned that Mr. Seagal had been keeping two young female Russian assistants, attendants, on staff where, who were available for sexual needs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He was sued for sexual harassment, illegal trafficking of females for sex, failure to prevent sexual harassment, retaliation and wrongful determination and false representation about employment. The matter was resolved privately by Stephen's lawyer and the case dismissed. Let's say there's a newer one, and I think it's even superior. It's uh, this has happened. I just heard that because I collect those stories like right. jewels. Anytime there's <laughs> Stephen Seagal story, I like love I love that. the Jamie Presley one. Where I'm an expert in shiatsu massage. Please let me massage you. You know, you told me that one. And she, <laughs> next thing you know, she's having her boobs grabbed on by him. <laughs> I'm an expert in shiatsu massage. Uh, let me give me those titties, baby. <laughs> As well, another woman saying that he claimed he was looking for lumps. Man, Seagal really is a charitable fella. Jenny McCarthy was one of Seagull's casting couch victims. They were casting playmates for Under Siege 2, she recalled. I was the last audition dressed frumpy and plain, the way I usually go, and I walk in his office, and it's only Steven. His office has a huge shag carpet and a huge screaming casting couch. Either Seagull is the biggest fraud on the planet, or it generally happens to transcend race and transforms into new ethnicities over time. Kind of like a fucked up Doctor Who. Shockingly, it's actually not the latter. In the past, Seagull has enjoyed pretending to be Italian and Japanese, respectively, but his current adopted cultural persona is that of a black man. Just when the sight of a bloated, squinting, ponytail douchebag couldn't get any more ridiculous, Seagull decided to try his hand at Ebonics, the language of the ghetto. All of a sudden, Seagull was a gangster. I don't know if he's fit to drive, y'all. I'm starting to get in a bad mood, you know? Maybe it's like a mood swing, my hormones, I don't know. You know, maybe it's my need to impose my will. But I your hand. Why would I shake your hand after you said I stunt? I don't like you. Well, my wife loves you. Then tell her to shake my hand. Now, you action freaks and uneducated moviegoers who watch his films and actually think he's at least bit entertaining as a great pretender, know better. You know who you are. I was reading up uh, all the shit that Steven Seagal's made up all throughout his career because there's a whole thing going on right now where Steven Seagal uh, told uh, everybody that Anderson Silva, he taught Anderson that case. Right. Steven Seagal, I heard his name. He's kind of a hanger on with you guys. He took credit for teaching Anderson Silva that the front kick that he used to knock out Vitor Belfort. Uh, does he actually know what he's talking about or is he just a groupie? Actually, you know, from what I hear from uh, Lyoto and from uh, Anderson is he does come in and work, and they do respect and listen to things that he says. Right. right. I mean, he's, there's videos of him training with Anderson. Well, fuck it. Anderson barely even speaks English. Yeah. Just run around and tell everybody that you taught him it. And you know what? Anderson's so cool, he'll probably be like, yeah, yeah, he taught me. He's a good guy. I always Steven thought Tegel. that was just a, him playing a goof. <laughs> but yeah, Anderson played doing, a goof. Anderson little, might be playing a, a little. Anderson calls me master. Um, and, you know, most of the Japanese people are from that tradition. They call me sensei or shihan. Is he really saying that he's the one that taught him? Yeah, Steven Seagal's really saying that Boss Rutan went fucking crazy. A colleague of mine is having some issues with his girlfriend. Pricey came up with a fight between Steven Seagal and Boss Rutan. Yeah, without a doubt, that's a short answer. She Boss Rutan all said the Seagal. way. He, so I'm sorry, girlfriend, you're wrong. I will slap him, pop, 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 pop in the face, grab his ponytail, maybe a headbutt here and there, and then fold him up. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> And he falls on the ground. It's almost like he believed his own bullshit, right? Well, what are these guys doing? They're all faking it. They know. They are, but they're probably, it's like mass hypnosis or mass hysteria. You know, like cult behavior. You, they'll earn it just by being amazing. I yeah, mean, but, but it's because they're good. All yes. the other guys who preach and talk about it like that, they're not good. They suck. Yeah. Like every guy who tells me that he is unbelievable but he never fought yeah. is full of shit. Well, you know how many times well, guys have told guaranteed. me? Guaranteed. Yeah. Not, it's not possible. You never. He will not know if he can do it <laughs> under pressure. He will not. I had ninjas coming into my class one time. <laughs> I, I, I'm not kidding. It's dangerous. What do you think of Seagal's? Uh, Seagal's yeah. claims. Yeah. So, so the, did you see the interview he did with Michael Chavello on your, oh, on your network? Oh, I left in your face. <laughs> the thing is this. The thing is this. Here, here I go back. Here I go back to, did you ever compete? No. Right. No, but I, 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 I trained uh, with other guys. We would fight in dojo. 
we all know that fighting in the dojo and fighting under pressure in the cage or in the ring, whatever, you cannot even compare to each other. You can have a hundred black belts. I don't care. I got I, I to see it. I got to yeah. see you fight. I don't believe people saying that you're good. I want to see you fight. Not in training, under pressure yes. with people around. So important. Then. So important. Wise words by Boss Root, ladies and gentlemen. Learn, knowledge, respect. Uh, follow Boss Rutten on Twitter. It's Boss Rutten, B A 